Hi there, this is Fiona from IELTS with Fiona and the Members Academy. Today I'm going to go through a few more of my daily tips. I'm going to keep doing that until I catch up with the right date. I've got a few days between the end of the Academic Task 1 boot camp and the general training one starting on Saturday. So I'm going to try and catch up with all of the daily tips that are on my website so you can find them under what's new. And there's something new every day, but some people just prefer to listen to them. They've told me they just like listening to a podcast rather than reading the tips and it's probably a quicker way to do it all in one go anyway. So we're starting from day nine. There is a gap fill and the gap fill is this. It's not something, a course, information is available for free online. So you've got a choice. It's not worthy to buy a course, it's not worthy buying a course, or it's not worth buying a course. So I've seen people mix these up, worthy and worth, and the expression is it's not worth plus ing. So lots of people say it's not worth buying a course. Information is available for free online. That's the correct answer. That's the grammar. But do you agree with it? I completely disagree with it. I've bought loads of courses because I know the information is online, but the way that it's packaged is different according to the teacher. And some teachers you understand, some teachers you don't. And that is why information, free information, does not in itself lead to transformation. So I personally, of course, believe it is worth buying a course. Everything I've learned about technology comes from a course that I bought with a teacher to help me when I got stuck. So that was day nine. Let's go to day 10. Day 10, and it's J for juncture. Um, it's not a word I use very often. Um, I was Googling words beginning with J related to learning English because I'd already covered a lot of them in my last two years of Advent challenges. I wanted something new. And um, so this word juncture is what happens when two sounds collide it's a feature of connected speech and it's something that could help you in the listening test. It, I cover it in the pronunciation course and it's words like ice cream and I scream. So if you say them really fast, ice cream, I scream, they sound very, very similar. Um, so you have to put a little pause in between them. So Ice cream, one word. I scream. I scream, two words. And there's a few words like that, um, like a name, like what's your name, a name, and an aim, an aim. So remember the N from the final letter of the first word joins to the next word if it's a vowel. So a name, a notion, sounds like a name or an ocean. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> um, there's a few more examples. That stuff, maybe what do you think I'm saying? What am I saying now? That stuff, that stuff. So it could be that is tough, meaning that is difficult, or that stuff. It's quite hard to hear it, so you have to listen to the context. There's a famous, uh, like a comedy sketch, and it's called the Four Candles sketch. Four candles sounds like fork handles, and it's a guy who goes into the shop asking for fork handles, handles for a fork, and he he keeps getting the wrong thing because of this juncture, four candles, fork handles. 
six quid. Remember, quid in the UK means a pound. So if you say, can you lend me six quid? It sounds like sick squid. Sick squid, six quid. New deal, nude eel. It's wings, it swings. That's juncture. If you want to go and have a look, it's... Oh, I've got the video there as well. Um, the four candle sketch. So that's on December the 10th and it's J4. Juncture. Uh, December the 11th, it's Advent Day 11 and it's a K and the word is key. So IELTS Task 2 essays often ask you to give reasons like cause and effect and problem solutions essays. What are the causes? What, wh why is this a problem? And I notice my students mixing up factors, reasons and causes and they mixed up the, the expressions due to and because of. So in this example, exercise is a key something in cardiovascular health. Exercise is a key something in cardiovascular health. What goes in the space? A key cause, a key factor or a key reason. How can you find the answer? The preposition will help you. So uh, a cause of, a factor in, and a reason for. So here the answer, exercise is a key factor in cardiovascular health. And when you go to that page, you'll find a review of day four with, with due to as well, because they're they're connected. So because of is due to, and that's also in my, my daily tips. Day 12 is L and it's for linking devices. If you use linking devices mechanically, like just saying moreover, besides, furthermore, in addition, then that keeps you at band six um, because there's no internal linking. Here, we're looking at an alternative way of doing that. And look at this. It says, the cost of a mobile phone halved, comma, halved, meaning it, it went down by 50%. It halved, comma. Then there's a linking word from 30 to 15 pounds a month. So what goes in that space? It's linking the first part about the mobile phone cost halved, and then it gives information from 30 to 15. What goes in the space? So options, falling, it fell, which fell? Only one of those is correct. And the answer is? falling. So it's an ing linking word. It's the present participle and it's a nice sophisticated complex way of linking sentences, especially in an example like this where you want to give more information about the first half of the sentence. So you can't say it fell, that would be a new sentence, and you can't say which fell because which does not refer to the whole of the first part. So falling from 30 to 15 pounds a month. Day 13. Oh, that's when I had my Members Academy meetup in Colchester, so I'll skip that one. Oh, here we go. Um, Day 13 is all about, are you ready for IELTS? There's a key indicator number two. And, oh, actually, I'm going to skip that. I've talked about that before. You can find that on the site. Let's go to day 14. Um, so, modals of deduction on day 14 is M. And it says, she has a very expensive car. She something rich. There's a gap. What goes in the gap? It's a modal. She can be rich. She may be rich. 
or she must be rich. So the first one is can be, two words. Second one is maybe, one word. And the third one is must be, and it's two words. So she can be rich, or she may be rich, or she must be rich. And the answer is she must be rich. It's two words, must meaning you're very sure, you're making an assumption because you can see the expensive car. So that's models of deduction. I've got a whole lesson about them in the Members Academy. Oh, sorry, I mean on the free website. And um, you can see how it relates to different parts of IELTS there. Day 15 is O for obligation. It's modals again. So modals of obligation, you mm, wear a mask when you're outside. So you mm, wear a mask when you're outside. Think about COVID. Now, only one of these is wrong. There, so there are, there's more than one correct option. So think about the rule. And the rule is A, you don't have to wear a mask. B, you needn't wear a mask. C, you mustn't wear a mask. Or D, you haven't got to wear a mask. Which one is actually wrong? Well, the one that's wrong is you mustn't wear a mask because this is a strong rule that you shouldn't wear a mask. But that's not the meaning. The meaning is you don't have to. There's no obligation. You needn't means you don't need to. And you haven't got to, which is the informal way of saying you don't have to. So remember, in the UK, they tend to say you haven't got to. In the US, you don't have to. So that's uh, another modal and that's modals of obligation. Let's look at day 16 now and it's P for phrasal verbs and the academic word list. So go again to that page and you'll get the link to all of my free slides related to this phrasal verb challenge. Um, when I was younger, I used to participate in many sports. Um, lots of my students in the speaking test often make formal choices like purchase instead of buy. Participate is another one. People think it sounds better because it's more formal. But when you're speaking, it really sounds unnatural. So what's the phrasal verb which could replace participate in? Is it take a part of or is it take part in? Correct answer is take part in. Very often phrasal verbs keep the same preposition as the formal uh, equivalent. So if ever you're stuck and you need to guess, guess what's the formal participate in and the informal take part in tends to be the same preposition. Day 17, Q is for questions. So yesterday I recommended a new IELTS book. Oh yes, so there's this new IELTS book and it's by Erica. Go to my Instagram or go to my website. It's a wonderful IELTS grammar and vocabulary book and I recommended it on social media. I got lots of questions when I shared it and they, they were just one word questions and they, they're really rude if you just ask one word. So I didn't even answer. So the question was cost question mark. That, that's really direct and demanding. So somebody else said price question mark and how much that's rude as well. How much it costs, maybe less rude, but there's a grammar mistake. So when you're writing a polite letter, general training task one, it's really important not to be too direct, especially with things like money. So one way you could do that is just to learn this phrase. I would be grateful if you could tell me how much, now what comes in the space, how much does it cost, how much 
it costs. Tricky one. Tricky. It may be tricky because you're listening, but let me read it again. I would be grateful if you could tell me how much does it cost or how much it costs. I'm sure you know the question, how much does it cost? But in this example, it's an indirect question. So you don't use the question form. You say, I would be grateful if you could tell me how much it costs. That's the answer. But you can learn that whole expression. I would be grateful if you could tell me how much it costs. That's it. And you can use that expression in your general training letters of request. Day 18. I don't know about you, but in the UK, prices have massively increased by 50% in some cases due to inflation. And here we've got a gap fill. Prices have something recently due to inflation. And it's either have raised or have rose or have risen. So raise and rise are often confused and the third form rose per simple and risen sorry third form quite difficult. So what do we need here? We need the third form prices have but do we need risen or raised? The answer is prices have risen because they've gone up by themselves. Raise needs an object. You raise your hand, but rise goes up like the sun. The sun rises. So prices have risen due to inflation. Day 19 begins with S and it's the word suggest. Suggest huge alarm bells always, always causes problems. I would say uh, don't use it. <laughs> um, suggest. So, for example, he suggested something, a dictionary. He suggested blank something, a dictionary. Three options. One is wrong. He suggested me to buy a dictionary. He suggested buying a dictionary or he suggested that I buy a dictionary. One is wrong. The wrong one is he suggested me to buy. Me, you don't put after suggest. He suggested buying, I-N-G. I think that's the easiest one to remember. Or he suggested that I buy a dictionary. And if you go to my website, you can. It, there's a little test there that you can do um, when you when you click on the link. Uh, that's day nineteen, day twenty. Okay, no day. Oh, T is for tenses. Day twenty. Okay, T is for tenses. Let's see the gap. The population something in many parts of the world. Before I give you the options, what would you put in that space? The population, something in many parts of the world. So here are the options. The population increases, present simple, is increasing, present continuous, or has increased, present perfect. Actually, sorry, only one of them is wrong. So. The population increases, is increasing, or has increased. So the one that's wrong is increases. If it's happening, if something is changing, you say it is increasing. And if it has already changed, has increased. So both of those would be correct, but increases, it's not a habit. It's not always true. So that one is wrong. Day 21, tourism causes, okay, you is for uncountable nouns, uncountable. Tourism causes a lot of environmental what? What, what would you put in that space? 
environmental damage or environmental damages. Maybe you can guess because we're doing uncountable nouns. The answer is environmental damage. So it's uncountable because it covers lots of different kinds of um, problems. Yeah, damages does exist. It's plural when it's a legal term. For example, if somebody caused you uh, any harm, they may need to pay you damages it's it's some kind of compensation for if you've uh, been the victim maybe of a crime or a car crash or um, somebody said something about you in the newspaper that upset you, they have to pay damages. But generally, damage is uncountable. V, day 22, V is for verb forms. The question is this, cycle lanes, actually that's another word like a juncture. In in the UK, I'm sure you have these as well, but we have cycle paths, cycle paths, paths where you can cycle. But if you say it really fast, it sounds like psychopaths, so it often causes confusion. So, cycle lanes encourage people to do more exercise as well as something tourism. So, what comes after as well as what verb form? Three choices. Only one is correct. As well as it boosts tourism. As well as boosts tourism as well as boosting tourism. So in that situation, it's ING. Cycle lanes encourage people to do more exercise as well as boosting tourism. You can't say as well as it boosts or boosts. It has to be ING, yes. Okay. Day 23 is W, and W is all about um, which, who, where, and where by. So listen to the sentence. What is needed is a system, blank, law-abiding citizens can feel safe but not monitored. What is needed is a system where, which, who, or whereby law-abiding law citizens can feel safe but not monitored. This was an essay about um, CCTV security cameras. And the answer is whereby. It's a nice, formal, less common linking word. So. What is needed is a system whereby law-abiding citizens can feel safe but not monitored. Where might be okay, actually, but I think whereby is more accurate in this example. So the last one I'm going to do for now is... Oh, it's a peel paragraph. If you go to X, day 24, it says, get your gift... And, oh, you have to go to day 24 in the Advent Adventure. I'm opening it. And it says, would you like to learn how to develop and extend your arguments in writing task two? And it says, yes, please. No, thanks. Is it free? <laughs> okay, so the correct answer is yes, please. Here's a small Christmas present from me. And you click there. And then you get a wonderful peel paragraph template. Yes, it still works. Great. Okay, that's good. I had completely forgotten about that. All right, guys, thanks very much for listening again. And I will catch up with you next week. And we'll go through the January daily tips. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.